So at this point, I want to describe to you two different types of genetic differences, mutations, that we've looked at before. SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, and indels, insertion deletion mutations, and how they create two different types of fragment length polymorphisms, both amplified fragment length polymorphisms, or AFLPs, and restriction fragment length polymorphism, or RFLPs. You can call those A flips and R flips if you want, but I probably won't refer to them like that. So an amplified fragment length polymorphism is a relatively easy one to understand. So we can have two different individuals, say, or one individual, in the simplest case, who has, again, an indel. So amplified fragment length polymorphisms rely on indels. So you might have an individual that's homozygous or heterozygous rather for an indel. When you look at the copy of, say, chromosome 1 from dad, 1 paternal, and chromosome 1 from mom, 1 maternal, the maternal copy of the chromosome might be a little bit longer. And that might suggest that she has a part of the chromosome that's missing, absent, from dad's chromosome. And what we can do is use PCR primers to detect this difference because our PCR primers are annealed to the same DNA sequences on both chromosomes when we perform PCR with this chromosome as a template molecule, the other primer will recognize the same DNA sequence down here at the telomere of the chromosome. So what happens is if we PCR using these primers, which are hybridizing specifically to the same DNA sequences, let's write in an example just for fun. So let's say both the paternal and the maternal copies of the chromosomes have ATC here where this primer is designed and the same sequence exists down here where the reverse primers hybridize. So what are the products of PCR that happen when you perform this reaction? The paternal chromosome is going to make lots and lots of copies of DNA that are exactly the length between the two primers. So I'll just draw four. At the same time, in a heterozygote who has one copy of the short chromosome and one copy of the longer version of the same chromosome, you'll make the same number of copies as the long version of the chromosome. So now you can imagine what would happen if you performed agarose gel electrophoresis with this sample. We're going to load the PCR reaction into a well at the top of the gel apply an electric field, the positive at the bottom and the negative at the top. The DNA migrates through the gel, smallest fragments first, and so what we're going to wind up seeing is there's going to be a small fragment, a small band on the gel. That represents those small fragments of DNA that were produced by PCR, and this larger fragment of DNA represents those long products. So when we have someone who's heterozygous for an AFLP, an amplified by PCR fragment length polymorphism, polymorphism, polymorphism meaning difference in size or shape or visibility, we have a difference in the size of those restriction of those amplified fragments. And so when you have an indel mutation, if you flank it on both sides with primers, you can detect differences in genotype composition based on gel electrophoresis and being able to separate the molecules that are in the PCR reaction based only on their size or length. At the same time, we have restriction fragment length polymorphisms, and these have to do with single nucleotide polymorphisms, usually, the type of mutation that we've discussed previously. And here's how this works. So we might have a DNA sample that has an ECO-R1 restriction site in it. And some other nucleotides 
on either side. And this is one double helix. So that's, say again, chromosome one paternal. And then we might have the double helix from the mother, which is going to look roughly the same, but will differ at one position in a very important way. So can you spot where the change is? So here where we had G-A-A-T-T-C, we have a difference. Now we have a T instead of an A. And remember, this was a recognition site for the ECOR1 restriction endonuclease concept we've talked about already. And that enzyme, when it recognizes GAATTC, will cut the DNA molecule in a staggered fashion like that. So what would happen if we used PCR primers on this DNA sample with primers that amplify across this restriction site? They would produce, in this case, a product that's how many nucleotides long? This is 14 nucleotides long. And if we ran this out on a gel just with PCR, we used these primers and these two templates. Those primers, if they hybridize to the same sequence, will both hybridize to both of the copies of chromosome 1. And so if you did agarose gel electrophoresis with the absence of the enzyme, minus. We load those samples in the well, electrophoresis. What's going to happen? Is there a size difference between the paternal and the maternal amplicons from PCR? No, they're both 14 nucleotides long. So even though this individual is heterozygous at this position, they've got an A on one chromosome and a T on the other, we can't detect that by PCR because the fragments that are produced are not yet polymorphic. So what do we have to do? We have to have a sample where we've added the restriction enzyme. Now what happens is, every time there's a PCR product that contains the paternal allele, the paternal haplotype that has the ECOR1 site, it's going to get cut. And that's going to produce two DNA molecules that are about half of the length as the full length 14 nucleotide molecule. But is ECOR1 able to cut mom's chromosome? No, because of this polymorphism, this SNP. So when we electrophoresis these samples, we add them into the well, apply an electric field, what we're going to see after we've added ECOR1 is that we get two small products, which run farther down the gel, those are the two cut products after ECOR1 digest, and we still get the undigested version of mom's chromosome, which is the same size as the undigested full length sample. So this is a restriction fragment length polymorphism. It takes one fragment, and it's polymorphic in the sense that there are two types of chromosomes. There's one that can be restriction digested, and there's one that can't. And we can only detect that difference in size after the addition of a restriction enzyme to the sample. So to apply the information we just learned, I want you to think about this and bring an answer to our next classroom session. Say you have an individual with a particular DNA sequence Looks kind of random, doesn't it? So let's say that's one molecule of DNA, one chromosome, one from dad, and we've got chromosome one from mom, and this individual is a heterozygote. Okay, so two different molecules of DNA. 
first figure out where in this giant piece of DNA they're heterozygous. Second, design a primer, a pair of primers, the sequence and the polarity notation on the sequence that can be used to amplify this fragment of DNA. So you'll need one forward primer and one reverse primer sequence. Then I want you to tell me how long is that amplicon? How many nucleotides long is the piece of DNA you expect to amplify? And then I'd like you to draw, as I've drawn in this video, the results from agarose gel electrophoresis before and after with and without the addition of the enzyme small one. So bring this information with you next time we talk.